Greetings, nerds. This is Cena Nerd. I'm your host, Sarah Belmont, and with me, as always, is our Mr. Producer, Will Paul. How are you doing tonight, Will? Doing very well, Sarah. How are you doing? Doing all right. I'm doing all right. That's good. That's good. Hey, happy uh, International Podcasters Day, a, a day early. There is a such day a day. early? Yeah, it's tomorrow. It's September 30th, but since uh, we're uh, recording on International Podcasters Day Eve, I figured I'd just wish you one. Yeah, well, me living in Alaska, I might as well be an international podcaster, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Right? exactly. I think we should get, like, a drum set and so that we can go, dun 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 Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make sure to, like, download a, download a WAV file or something like that so I could, like, splice it in. <laughs> no, no, I, I think you should take drum lessons. And oh, yeah. don't worry, the, the teacher won't be as hard on you about your technique as your piano teacher apparently is. <laughs> I, I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. I hope not. <laughs> Oh, my God. So tonight we are talking uh, more DCU Titans, another episode. I got some things to say. I got some points to make. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sure you do. When I saw your, I saw the notes in the rundown section, I was like, oh, this is going to be fun. <laughs> Actually, my, the one note I'm, like, dying to drop, um, it's not even in the rundown. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, but it's something really funny, and I'm I'm wondering if you made the same connection, but we'll see. We'll see. Okay. okay. Spoiler alert. Um, in the meantime, we do have some news because some stuff has been happening. Just a few things. Jesus, Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> this Spider-Man situation. I think I think at the end of the day, this is what we've learned. Sony loves drama. <laughs> they yeah. love drama, and when they are not getting any attention, <laughs> they have to do something dramatic to get everyone talking about them and their properties again. Because yeah. that's really all this did was resume that conversation about why can't these two studios work it out? Because it's been so great thus far, yeah. and it's what everybody's wanted, and now we're just getting it like cut off at the knees because we we expected a third movie at least in the franchise so and and you know i maybe we said something to do with it maybe the voices were loud enough but i honestly just think sony wanted the attention they wanted the attention and 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 marvel wanted and wanted their money and so they had this very public very Air, dirty airing of laundry and it was just like really y'all things that probably should have just better been left said in the boardroom made it out to the public domain and it was just it, yeah it was just it was it was a drama and you know it is a you know movie two movie studios duking it out so you know what better way to to play it all out and and for all to see but I have to say Tom Holland with his uh, with his Instagram post just like perfectly summed up the situation and and perfectly put a bow on it as far as announcing the deal that hey I'm not leaving you know I love the Wolf of Wall Street uh, gif that he dropped that was just perfect yeah absolutely I I when you sent me that I thought the same too so. He, we're going to have Spider-Man for another third movie in the franchise to wrap mm -hmm. it all up. Right. And then we're also going to see him in another MCU movie. So they don't have any specific information. A lot of people can assume it's going to be an Avengers type film because that just isn't obvious. But I've heard speculation that it, there, there are a few other options out there. What are your thoughts about the MCU movie? Yeah, so as far as looking at options, clearly we have the next phase of the films coming. So it would seem that I don't think the Eternals would be a good place for for Spider Man at this point. So who the heck put that out there? <laughs> that's so dumb. It's, I never even thought about that, but yeah. I that's like they're filming right now. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's just, yeah. I mean, so they're gonna have to rewrite to get Spider Man in the film. No. So I, honestly, I think it would be. I think a good spot possibly could be the the Thor movie. Uh, another one is um, maybe maybe with uh, the next 
Doctor Strange because they did have a lot of interaction together in in, in Infinity War when yeah. they were. So that would be another place where I could see it happening. I can't see it with Thor, although I can't see Thor of love, of thunder and lightning, whatever the name yeah, that's is. True. I, I, that, that is such a, that's going to be such a weird concept already. And I don't really rec- recall Thor and Spider-Man interacting. So I like your thoughts about Dr. Strange. I also heard people throw out Blade Granted, we don't even have a release date, guys. Right, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, and then I also heard somebody throw out, that, like, that's how you bring in Deadpool. And there's a lot of people who want to see that movie because Deadpool and Spider-Man. But then I'm thinking in my mind, well, we get, we're going to get a third movie from Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. We, the beauty of Captain America the franchise is with Winter Soldier, they started bringing in other people. Right. And really, and Spider-Man, you could do that with. I don't know why, like, we're only getting two more. So we have to use it wisely and strategically. Yep. yep. <laughs> exactly. So what if Deadpool just showed up in that third movie of his and expanded the universe that way? I don't know. I'm just saying that I think that you could capitalize on the fact that we're getting two, not just one. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I like I like your thought about having a Deadpool show up. And it doesn't, especially given how this next phase of uh, Spider-Man 3 is going to, he is Spider-Man on the run. So what better to have the Merc with the mouth show up I mean, and, and basically maybe get hired by Jonah Jameson to, to you know, do some of his dirty work as far as uh, trying to bring Spider-Man in. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. I'm... And- I um I could see it a lot of different things because I I also do like your point about Doctor Strange Strange and everybody always compared Tony and Doctor Strange and how um it was just too much but I think Infinity War proved that you he could build that same similar relationship with Doctor Strange however um that movie is called um Multiverse of Madness yeah. Poor Peter. Peter's going through puberty. He's yep. going to be a senior. He's going to be crossing multi dimensions. I don't think you could handle it. He may not. He may not. But he. Yeah. But <laughs> we saw it work before in the Spider Verse. So hey, this would be a good way to tie the two universes together. <laughs> he couldn't even handle fake monsters while on a trip <laughs> <of> overseas. <laughs> he figured it out. But I'm just yeah. saying. Yeah, but I about think the, that we'll might be older be. then. Yeah. <laughs> that might be that a little too much. I mean, the kid's already been to space. Technically, he died. He got blipped out of existence. Yeah. It's he, he would go bad, and maybe that's how we get the true venom. No, no, that's not going to happen, but I'm just saying it could. It could. It could. <laughs> <laughs> Multiverse, gotta love it. Um, what is else going on? Speaking of webs, Sony is developing a Madame Web film. Please explain this to me because I don't know what the heck I just said. Yeah, so you remember Madame Web? You probably remember her from the 1990s Spider-Man cartoon. She was Cassandra Webb. It was an elderly lady whenever Peter would have to go have visions and have things explained to him. He would enter Madame Web's realm and she would help him with uh, with whatever problem he was having. That was did, my... did she actually turn him into a spider at one point? She did. That's that's okay. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you remember it? Yep. Yeah, see, you, you didn't know who, who this is, but uh, for some reason that episode stands out to me. Like when I yeah. think of that TV show, yeah. I just have this image of him actually being a spider. I have no idea why. <laughs> Well, I mean that that whole series was just a phenomenal. I know we've we've talked about it before, uh, but uh, this version of her is in development uh, in the in the Sony Spider Verse, and the uh, writers of the Morbius film, which I guess is in development, is uh, are are apparently going to be the ones who are going to be behind uh, writing the script for it. Uh, this was just recently broken by. Uh, news that was broken by Collider, and so it's it's still it's still a, 
very early stages, but uh, it was sort of in the in the it was sort of the lead up to the news from the MCU and, and Sony. Uh, this happened, I guess, I think Thursday, and then it was whenever you know whenever Sony and Disney made up, then you know, obviously this story just sort of got overshadowed. Huh, interesting. Morbius is filming, though, right? That's the yeah, one with is. Jared Leto. Yeah, so, so I, I foresee Sony doing a classic Sony move and waiting to see how well Morbius does in the box office before really even shooting a, anything with Madame Web. Agreed, agreed. They, yeah, I, mean, I think they, they've announced it, but again, it's in very early development, so you're right. It, it could wait to see how things go and could easily end up on the shelf. Yeah, because, I, I mean, it's 2019. At this point, if we had listened to Sony a few years ago, years ago, we would have gotten, like, silver and something. <laughs> 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 we would have gotten a few other things. Like, yeah. And, and this, this whole universe Sony's building, I still don't quite understand it. Because as soon as Tom walks away, it's going to be really hard for them. Granted, Venom did good. I understand yeah. that they're capitalizing. Yeah. Venom also didn't do good. <laughs> it did good, but did it? I don't know anymore. It did. It did well. Internet. I think the international box office is what really helped it with its its final numbers. But uh, yeah, I mean, but people really liked it, and clearly, it's going to. Um, you know, they're making a second one, so. We shall see. I guess I'm more curious to, uh, because I still haven't seen it, but I'm more curious if those who went to see Venom are going to go see the second one, because I think half of the attraction wasn't that it was a good movie, but they were, it was an experiment and yeah. everyone wanted to see what Sony had created because there were all of these stories cir- circling about how it was complete crap. So, so sometimes I don't think the uh, the box office is a good meter on whether or not the movie is good and people enjoyed it because I'm sure plenty of people went to that movie and did not like it. Yeah, true. <laughs> that, that's true. That's true. But it, it 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 moved the needle enough that they feel pretty confident they could do a second one. So we'll absolutely, see. absolutely. Speaking of moving the needle enough to do a second one, um, we're we're, we're just. For some reason, the CW will not let Arrow die. <laughs> um, will, yeah. At first, a lot of us, including myself, have deemed the show to be the black the Black Star pilot mm-hmm. or um, backdoor pilot because she is featured so much and has all of these plot lines and and they're do, making other moves with their OGs. And now all of a sudden we're getting reports about a Birds of Prey yeah. with, with her and with Katie Cassidy. Katie Cassidy, who I think is the real person who cannot let Arrow die peacefully. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> she, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's funny because I remember like during I think it was uh, San Diego Comic Con or, or or some point this summer she was referencing a meeting with with uh, Beth Schwartz and the, the powers that be at the CW about doing some type of of spinoff with the Black Canary, and so it, it, yeah, and of course we all whenever we heard, heard in season seven that uh, when it was rumored that. Oliver and Felicity were going to have uh, a daughter on the show, and of course that did happen. And and you know we had the fat the flash forwards twenty years. Of course we all were like we're like okay they're they're opening the door for a backdoor pilot. It's going to be a Black Star show, and sure enough, there it is. Uh, but yeah, I don't know if it's going. To, I mean, at least it seems that that it's not going to be necessarily birds of prey because obviously they have that going on in the, in the film verse right now, but it it is going to be a spinoff with Mia and Katie Cassidy Rogers and Juliana Harkavy. And we'll see who else may show up obviously with it. And I would think it given that they spent so much time setting up the flash forwards in, in season seven, and we'll probably see them even more season eight. 
uh, this new series will be based in, in that reality. Or it may be back in present day, given that I have I did see somewhere where uh, Mia uh, is going to show up in uh, Crisis. At this point, who's not showing up in Crisis? Um, not Michael Rosenbaum. That's true. That's true. Not he... not the the Lex Luthor we know from Smallville. It's not. He's not. Yeah. It was very interesting. His his uh, Instagram and Twitter post about it. They, I guess he was visiting his uh, grandfather in Florida, and they just called him up, his agent up, and said, "Hey, uh, come on, come do this." And he was, but they did not have a script, no money. Or anything it was just like oh we're just going to like just because we can't we we called you we just expect you to just drop everything and fly up to vancouver which i i, I if that's how they're doing the negotiations no wonder our, our dream of cameron cuff showing up at segel failed because if he got the same offer i would kind of be like um i'd like a few more details before i like do this mm-hmm yeah, um, but apparently they did that to Ryan Choi, and he is now going to show up as Adam because Brandon Roth will obviously be busy playing Kingdom Come Superman. We all saw this. We all saw the production photo. I don't. There's some. There's some stuff going on with that photo. Yeah, um, but, looked but really the, cool. Looked, yeah. Um, you were gonna say something? Yeah, but I was gonna say Brandon. Also, there was the the shot that they sent, and then there was one that he posted on his Instagram uh, that uh, was him in the suit, and it even looked even better than the than the publicity shot. I thought. I, I didn't see it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't follow Brandon Ralph. I don't. Fo- I didn't follow him either. It was was one of those things. All it, it came across the. And across the interwebs, and I was like, "Oh, it's another, 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 uh, another shot of him in, in the costume." And it was actually him instead of the production still. And I, I have to say, I re- it it was definitely one of the better looking uh, costumes that have come out on the on the on the TV shows here recently. Cool. Um, I'm kind of just crisis out at this point, like. If we like covering news about crisis is just getting ridiculous in my mind where I'm like, okay, yeah. I, I haven't, we haven't even seen the shows come back yet. Yeah. yeah. I, like- I don't want more information. I want less information about what's in store. And I did, did Stephen Amell tweet out something which basically makes it seem that he's not going to be in the entire last season of Arrow. It seemed it seemed as such. I mean, it could that it could be that. I mean, we may see him meet his meet his demise, as we all we all know it will happen in in the crisis, and then episodes nine and ten could be just to wrap up and to send off for the the, the backdoor pilot for for the new new series. Yeah, what's really going to suck is that it's going to be all Barry's fault. It's always Barry's fault. <laughs> but uh-huh. I agree. But I agree with you. I know last week when we were talking about the news with uh, Smallville, uh, Tom Welling showing up, it's getting to that point where I, 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 I'm sharing your concerns that we're getting all these people showing up from every single iteration of DC shows. I mean, even the Huntress from the 2002 Birds of Prey show that only lasted 13 episodes is is going to be in, in this crossover event and i i guess really it seems that the first seven episodes for the for the the core shows are just going to be setting this event up and and then after the end of the crisis i guess we'll have one one universe if they follow what is done in the comics i think the stakes for oliver's death has already been diminished and that's what's really bothering me about this that because of how they set up the season finale for seven mm-hmm. with Felicity going to see him, I that right there, well, obviously he he died, but he also was placed into a safe. He he was placed in a little box. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't was. know how to explain this. Yeah, it's, he, yeah. 
like a little paradise maybe that so that they could be reunited because he made a deal and he they did win obviously so i think that was part of the bargain that okay i will i will t- basically sacrifice life with my family um but in exchange i eventually get reunited with with felicity in the end it's kind of sucks that me is not left in that or or his son yeah. william a part of that bargain but it just to me knowing that leading into crisis and for you to say he's gonna meet his demise um halfway through forewarning you <laughs> i will not cry because I know it's a happy ever after. So yeah. that makes it almost really hard for those writers to pull off making me really like that loss and that weight right. of that loss, right. knowing what happens. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, because at this, I, I, it would really surprise me if they go an alternate route and, and he doesn't die in, in crisis. And because they they've really have built it up and 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 we did as we've talked about before we did really have the end of arrow as we know it in at the end of season 7 right right or 6 yeah or 6 yeah i, I think <laughs> arguably based off if people have been listening to us commentate about season 7 there is a clear line um because the first half of that season is brilliant it is it was one of the best seasons of TV ever. And then it's all downhill the back half. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I would still argue like 8, 9, and 10 maybe of season yeah. 7. And then, uh, yeah, just, yeah. Uh, I don't know what they were doing. They were they were pulling out of strings. Um, but crisis averted. We will keep, stay tuned um, yep. because we, the shows will be back sooner yeah. than we realize it. Yeah, next and week. And it's. We're just gonna be, we're it's it's gonna be like watching a car accident happen right before you and can't do anything about it. But we do have some good news to end on, some interesting news, some news that I'm also having problems like really believing is tangible because there's so much unknown about it. Right. Okay. I I want I want titles. I want dates. I want photos before I think it's actually happening. But. Kevin Feige is apparently making a Star Wars movie. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And that was, to me, like, the honestly, in some ways, the the, the largest news out of out of last week. I mean, I know, because, I mean, at the end of the day, we figured Marvel and Sony would figure out a way to to, to, to figure out how to make more Spider-Man movies. It's just too much, too much money at stake for them not to. But this one really caught. I mean, we all. Kevin Feige is, is admittedly a big Star Wars fan, but just to think that he is going to be going over to that universe and seeing what he's done with the MCU, I, I, I'm excited for it. Honestly, um, what are your thoughts? Okay, okay. My my thoughts. Well, I hope he's a Raylo shipper. Um, I have that thought. I hope that he can um, prevent JJ from taking away my dream. I hope he can expand my dream. Um, but one thought automatically: where the heck was he for episode eight? Okay. Yeah. An hour and a half of it is just trash. Oh, so <laughs> it's, just, it's just bad. Oh, the Last Jedi. <laughs> yeah. My my thoughts is essentially: I just want to know what he's making, when he's going to make it, and. Um, I I'm gonna blame him personally if episode nine does not make my dreams come true because he could have um, prevented a car crash. Um, he could have prevented all of my fan fiction beliefs and theories and uh, love. Okay, do not break my heart, Star Wars. I can't take it at this point. <laughs> well, here's 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 what I think is a great thing. Uh, I, I'm I'm ready to let go of the of the Skywalker saga. I think it has been around for 40 years. It has we for the, the last Jedi was it, it had problems, and 
I mean, really, even, I mean, let's just be honest, going back to even J.J. just basically reimagining A New Hope and just repackaging it, The Force Awakens, uh, it, it, there's nothing new there, I guess, is mm-hmm. what I'm trying to, trying to say. And we are just basically, re, I mean, we, we, we're just regurgitating the stories that we, of the Skywalker saga, and just instead of it, you know, now it's Ray and, and things where we're like thinking with the with the images we saw a few weeks ago as far as her seeing it's you know really where, good really good trailer yeah yeah really good trailer but also the image we saw a few weeks ago of her with the red lightsaber and uh, we're thinking is it a force vision is it this is it that or other again it, it go, is rooted back in just the the original Sk- skywalker story so it's a clone she is a clone. She is a clone, which I think is a cop out. But anyway, so uh, just for that, very, just for you re- bringing that point up, makes it clear they need to. Why I'm excited for Feige is he can bring new life to this franchise because he has shown how you can world build and the MCU and this basically we we oh. we'll get we get our our ending here. If if Kathleen Kennedy, who I, she's still going to be a part of the, of the process, she's not being replaced. But if she allows him to be free to really focus on character and how, like we were talking about early with uh, with the spider with Spider Man, how you can use various elements and, and various characters. And, and really focus on the characters and and and, and build the narrative and build a a, a clear story and build it out over time. I think Feige has shown that he can do that seamlessly and, and not in a very clunky way that somehow Star Wars does it because I mean they 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 don't even they have basically removed a lot of the extended universe whenever Disney got the property. So they were kind of stuck with what they have. And so if I think if we're free of the Skywalkers, then Feige can have the freedom to, to build this new universe that I, I think will, will carry the franchise forward. So, okay. I just had a thought. Um, what would be really cool is if he helps produce the, the um, Weiss, D.B. Weiss from the Game of Thrones. Yeah. Um, if he produces their saga or whatever, they are building a three-part movie because they also, considering what happened with the last season of Game of Thrones, they need somebody behind them telling them how to construct an overall narrative thread, and and that's that's what I, I hear when you say character, but let's not forget he is a producer he's not necessarily the writer he's not the right. director right. but he has this magical sense of sight on how you plant these story seeds in mm-hmm. one movie and you build upon them in another and he sees the full arc yeah so so yeah to a degree that is character but there's also something about how he's able to pull those threads invite new people in mm-hmm. and really cultivate a world and a a and an arc that's not just defined by one character but multiples and also by really weaving together films yeah. so very curious I, it's it's sounds good i'm also worried about the man's health I'm worried about <laughs> yeah. He, yeah. how how this like because because I also you know m- there's something to be said when you have yourself stretched too thin you know exactly. he exactly. he's got some phases left to do he's not done with MCU God forbid right so so as much as I'm excited like the Star Wars fan in me I'm also nervous as the MCU fan in me <laughs> I'm just like okay. Take it yeah. down a notch, but we yeah. got other things to talk about. I exactly. don't want to um, stay on that note too long. We do have some Titans to catch up with. They this week was a flashback episode 
because the writers clearly wanted to delay answering any of the questions about Jason Todd, the cliffhanger that occurred in the previous episode. So, of course, they stuck this in here. Um, I, I get why. At first, I was mad about the timing of the flashback episode, but it does help move the story along, especially with all the references. It yeah. blows my mind that all of this only happened five years ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Considering where they were, like, with with Dick and Don being together and Hank and her not being a thing, and now where they are, it's just, like... Five years? All of that can happen in five years? Seriously? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Seriously? Yeah, it, it is hard to, to see how that happens in, in, five, in that span. But I mean, obviously they did they did touch on Don and, and, and Dick's relationship in season one when he had the, the Visions right. uh, alternate you know, alternate. Uh, reality there set up by um uh, by raven's father but the same at the same time um i i agree with you that the timing it seems like there should have been a little bit more of a, of a gap because where we see these characters now and how they well i, mean, I guess we do see the the hank and dick sometimes have have their moments but yeah, it, it, it would have been better if it had been maybe you know ten years of lapse or something like that. But yeah, uh, and this wasn't really about. I don't as much as this is a Titans flashback to tell you inform you a little bit. I'm sure there's going to be another flashback episode because I th- it's not over yeah. what they set up at the end, which was a really cool move. It, it was one of the first times when. I was I was not caught off guard, but I was I'm starting to understand more about Dick and this darkness that's inside of him and that people keep reminding him um, he can't he should be or he shouldn't be. It's it's really interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, but this was really a Donna story arc with what happened oh, yeah. because we finally learned more about that that image that when she first returned to the tower of the birthday party. So we get context. Mm-hmm. And okay, I don't understand it. Well, okay. like in in less than an hour, I fell in love with with Garth and Donna. Um, yeah, beautiful well, relationship. Yeah, yeah. Didn't feel forced. Um, you you got that there was history, there was a lot of pining, mutual pining, and a lot of destinies, and the fact that one is an Amazonian, one is a Atlantean. I they clearly they have common interest and background in history. Yeah, yeah. And then they killed it. They did. And I'm not and... done. I'm not done. <laughs> <laughs> they killed it in what I believe is the exact same set as in the Wonder Woman movie when Steve Trevor gives Diana the watch back and says, you can save today. I'm going to go save tomorrow. Because that was also at an airport. He literally had to get on a plane. And and that is also where Donna lost Garth. So I'm just, I'm just saying, Amazonians, do not go to the airport <laughs> with a loved one because they will die. Yeah. They will die. They will die. Even though, I guess, Garth being there, you know, but for Dick telling him, Garth would not have been there. But, uh, but I, I get you. I like, I like, I like the parallels there that you did with Donna and and Diana. Uh, I have only the, the, seen Wonder Woman one time, and yeah. I'm watching this episode, and I'm thinking to myself, is that the same goddamn airport? <laughs> <laughs> it looks so similar. It felt very similar, but I, I love what you did there with the parallels with there with the with the relationships because uh, obviously Donna Donna was basically the, the Themyscira basically she was allowed to come to San Francisco to fight with the Titans for a limited time basically just to uh, have just a, a window of just here's you're young go explore the world but you got to come back home. And and Garth clearly they you're right they they sold this relationship and I, I bought this one a whole heck of a lot more 
than the relationship that we got with uh, a Swamp Thing, for example. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, they they sold this one a lot better. I don't know. They, they I, I I felt if the the goal of this was to build that connection and understand the stakes for this season and why the Titans broke up. For me, it worked. Yeah, absolutely. And then they literally shot it in the throat. One of the most violent deaths I've seen in TV in a while. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I, I, it, it reminds me of, and granted, a lot of listeners know I don't necessarily read comic books, but I, I do. I'm around enough people like Will to, and my Twitter feed is always just driven with comic book story arcs and a lot of nerdy talk. So I'm aware that in the books at one point, Superman and Wonder Woman get together. And a lot of people didn't like that essentially because, and this is my comparison to um, Steve and Diana versus Donna and, and Garth is that, well, Diana and Steve worked so well is because one is, this larger than life being and the other is just a human man. Yeah. And so that juxtaposition is really nice. Well, well now in this episode for briefly, we're presented with the opposite of where two people who are so similar. Yeah. They come from different worlds, but they're really due to legacy due to where they come from. There is this mutual understanding, especially since they're both find themselves on earth and, um, and surrounded by mere mortals, mm-hmm. that that there is a connection there, just like there would almost arguably be a connection between Superman and Wonder Woman. So, yeah. so I mean, to me, this is just proof that as long as the actors have the right chemistry and the story is written in a way that makes you feel that connection, it it, it doesn't matter if they're too similar or complete opposites it will work it will it will um but but now you have to a- a- answer my question well yeah yeah um have we been misled by titans all this season because i swear to god the main villain is supposed to be death stroke mm-hmm. not dead shot we, we have not been misled it is okay. death it is death death stroke <laughs> You just shot a lot of people this episode. <laughs> incredible. The moment, I wrote that mo- note, the moment in the opener when he shoots through, um, a pr- like, they're in um, a precinct and you yep. have two people locked up and then the lawyer is on the outside and all of a sudden one bullet, it feels like, takes all three of them out and I'm just like, who is this Hawkeye? Like, what? Yeah. what is happening? <laughs> like, yeah. Jesus it's so weird, and and I kept racking my brain because obviously the only thing I have to compare this to is to Arrow, right. and and I'm like, Slade never shot people. I felt like it was always he had the the big machete, and he he cut off. Well, he like slit Moyer's throat, so right. death stroke. But yeah, th- this episode I was kind of like, huh, interesting. Yeah. It's just all bullets. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah. It's easy. I, I can see where you were thinking. Okay, it might be dead shot because of because of the the, the weapon of choice in the in this episode. But it, it's more. Again, you you have to remember one. You, you did have Wintergreen at the beginning. Whenever uh, with the in the earlier part of the episode when he was given his assignment, which is again one death strokes. Uh, Parker. You know I'm kidding, right? I know you are. Okay. Yeah, I know you are. <laughs> okay. I know okay. You are. okay. Okay. So I'm just I, I I fell into a bit of mansplaining, comic explaining. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like <laughs> I understand there's a difference. I'm yeah. just calling a dead shot for a dead shot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and he de- he definitely was a dead shot this episode. <laughs> okay, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh man! Yeah. What What are some of your thoughts about the episode? So I, I, I like the way they introduced Jericho. Mm, yeah, the, was, the book, the books, um, bookends. Yeah, that they use. 
Yeah, I really, really like the way they did that, and and also the 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 threat that that Slade presents to the uh, to it, it, it to me it, it's definitely foreshadowing how Slade comes to hate the Titans uh, mm-hmm. beyond beyond the. Uh, assume the summit that Winter Game gave him to, uh, I guess, take out Donna. I mean, because clearly he was he he was following her, and and poor poor Garth got in the way. Uh, but I, I oh, that's interesting. I thought it. I thought he was following Garth. I don't know why. I I just because um I kept thinking in that moment when when Dick and and Garth are talking, mm-hmm. the way Garth was sitting, it, he there was a wielding right up a window right opposite of him. And I was thinking to myself, oh, is this when they're gonna do it? Like oh. he just got what he wanted. Oh. So for some reason I had it in my mind. You're probably right considering it was her plan to go to the airport and Garth just showed up, but yeah. Yeah, well, and also because I'm trying to figure out how this just this Julian character who was Donna's uh, contact there at the museum, how she fits into all this, other than other than maybe just being a, a plot device just to for this episode that you know you're only here for a certain period of time and you have to go back. But I th- maybe he was following her. It's possible he was following her. Something that she has at the museum that Wintergreen was needed you know for some other client mm-hmm. uh, so there's yeah I mean, there's there's definitely that because because if they are following the judas contract storyline i mean that that was there was a um there was something that that they were trying to that deathstroke was trying to acquire uh from as part of the as part of the story so um so that could that could be the case um interesting i i would really like that because you're right she stood out as who is this Mm -hmm. what's going on here why does she know so much about the amazonians why does it feel like how is and what's her background with with donna Um, because there's a very much a motherly thing occurring here so and and i would and i think that makes even more sense if he was actually supposed to kill her considering in previous episodes it's pretty clear he does not know where titan's tower is right so if he had really been following garth or donna he he would know where titan tower is yeah because that's where they live <laughs> exactly and he, yeah he did not yeah because prior to it's it seems prior to this particular episode he did not have any real interaction with the Titans. I mean, because the Titans were obviously chasing Dr. Light and, Mm -hmm. and Slade at that point really other, he didn't seem to have any connection to them whatsoever. Yep. Yeah. I, and, and I think there's more to come. I think there's a lot to fill in here, especially where, but this is just not only, him and how he meets the Titans, but more importantly, how the Titans encounter Slate, mm-hmm. because he takes out, he gets, he gets signs a contract and he takes out Garth. Right. And suddenly it's no longer about justice, but vengeance for all of these, um, soups. So, and, in that moment, you know, Donna and Dick are not my favorite, like, couple-wise. It, it's still weird, especially because I know that Mika Kelly is a little bit older, and by a little bit, uh, a lot older than um, Brendan. But I still like their their interaction because it meant something in the end. Mm-hmm. If, they, if we didn't have that scene then the line at the end where she tells them be back man would make no sense. Granted, I'm sure I'm not the only viewer who, when she said that automatically said the other thing of fuck Batman. Yep. (laughs) 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 
once you say that, and they said it a lot in the trailers last yeah. year, yeah. you can't go back. You can't. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> and and to your point, that like suddenly in her mind, and in that moment, I'm I'm automatically started thinking about how they open the episode. It's like, okay, how is this gonna tie back around? And and then we see Dick in encounter Jericho. Poor kid. I mean, yeah. he's deaf. He's innocent. He's just trying to buy some music. Yeah. He's got this creepy stranger who's just like, oh, hi, kid. You want some candy? I don't know how this is going to end. I don't, I don't really know the intent behind what Dick thinks going, is going to happen. Um, it is interesting, though, that he was able to figure out Jericho's relationship with Slade and not Rose's. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That was very interesting. Uh, and I wonder if it's just five years late removed. He's just lost his edge, or just, or is this? You know, or it could be the the now nurturing Dick who's pulling all these strays, and, and the camp counselor Dick was didn't even think to like check her background beyond. No. No, I mean, I mean that's one thought. Yeah. I mean, like five years ago when okay. he sets out on this mission to find figure out who Slade is, yeah. what 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 connections he had. He obviously finds he has this I'm assuming ex wife mm-hmm. who has Jericho. Right. So did he just stop the search there and didn't realize that there might be other children mm-hmm. of Slade? That's- Many offspring? It's possible. Uh, it's possible, or for whatever reason, Rose did not in the Interpol file just didn't connect Rose and Slade at that point. I mean, it could just be as simple as a computer error, or or somehow. Just Rose, saying, Batman is an awesome detective. He is. He is. That's why. He, <laughs> that's why Dick needs to be be like Batman. <laughs> oh man. Anything we missed? I'm pretty sure this was the episode in a nutshell. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it that that was. I, I honestly, I, I hate that we only had one episode with Garth because uh, I, I really, I really like this character. Mhm. Mhm. I, I, I do too. Yeah, I, I really hate that. I hope somehow they have some other flashback opportunities with him uh, in, in this season because um, uh, I, I really did enjoy. Yeah, I mean, it was only a 45 minute episode, too, but they really did a lot in those 45 minutes. Yeah. Um, I didn't really miss the um, JV squad. Nope. <laughs> um, Corey, um, it, it was weird because I think because they fully committed to this being a flashback episode, that's why it worked. Mm-hmm. Instead of saying, oh, we're going to do flashbacks and do a little bit of present day stuff. Yeah. At least have Corey maybe reunite with the team, but they were they're like, no, 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 we're we're gonna tell this story from start to finish, no interruptions, and I think that did its did its job. So so yeah, there was a few characters who were clearly missing from this week, but I don't I don't think this this would have landed as well as it did for me yeah. had there been other interruptions. I agree, I agree. It was a nice compact episode really sold the story as far as uh, as we talked about before donna and garth's tension sexual tension their relationship and 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 also why deathstroke uh is is such a such a threat to the titans so it really set the foundations for that for the rest of the season yeah now i did watch something online like a little teaser for Mm -hmm. this season Mm -hmm. not not next episode but this season Mm -hmm. and there's a monologue playing about how deathstroke told dick grayson that if he ever reunited the titans again he would kill them one by one yep i'm glad you brought that up yeah i'm glad you brought that up not as threatening because he let them go, I guess. I don't I don't really know. It just it was a weird I'm supposed to be intimidated by this, but clearly you had an opportunity to take them out and you didn't take it. 
Well, that's where I think Jericho comes into play. Okay. Thing to do with him, maybe letting him go. Well, well, it it needs to be Dick's fault. It has to be Dick's fault. It has to be Dick's, which which is again a little bit weird because it was Donna who lost the quote unquote love of her life, not Dick. Mm-hmm. Unless there's something we don't know between Dick and Garth, I'm just saying. Anything. <laughs> <laughs> Anything's possible. <laughs> <laughs> oh man this is what happens when i don't get krypton anymore <laughs> all right on that note i think it's time to wrap it up yeah. uh will why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you yes you can find me at will and polk at that's w-i-l-l-m-p-o-l-k You can find me at SJ Belmont, S-J-B-E-L-M-O-N-T. Please follow our crew on Twitter at Scene and Nerd. Friend us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram. But most importantly, rate, subscribe, and comment on Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, YouTube, and Spotify. Good night, geek out, and you're welcome.